Welcome to Every Woman. And you know, it's never too early to get kids started thinking about money. We have a uh, money expert here, Emily Chase Smith. And you know, Emily, when I was growing up, my parents never wanted me to think about money. And I really appreciated that they, you know, kind of just sheltered me from that and just was like, we'll, we'll take care of you. But is that really the right way to do it? You know, I have to say, with all due respect to your parents, I advocate the opposite. Um, I advocate really bringing kids in when they can make mistakes and make choices when it doesn't matter. The analogy I give is I have a seven-year-old and I dropped her off at my mom's and they were going to run some errands and she had $17 and I said, you know, whatever she wants to buy with her $17 and my mom said, but what if it's like kind of junky and I said, this is where she's going to learn. She's going to learn with $17 when she's seven years old instead of on a $30,000 car when she's 21 years old. But what if your mom's right? What if she buys something? Oh, she totally will. <laughs> she will absolutely buy and, garbage. And then do you get any say in that? <laughs> no, I, I want to let her learn. I mean, of course we'll talk about it. So she'll bring it home, right? It'll be garbage. It'll break. And then we'll talk about the value of money and the value of saving to buy something that's worth having and those kind of things. And, and what if she's getting older? I mean, I, I know with uh, parents, they have a hard time when they're buying wardrobe that, you know, that they maybe shouldn't, and they say, hey, this is my money. You said I could buy what I want. How are you going to oh, handle that? Well, I have a 12-year-old, so we also have a, um, a, a appropriateness clause. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's always clauses yeah, in Absolutely. There. A little freedom with some clauses. <laughs> yeah. If you can't bend over, you are not buying that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> but um, So what is, uh, are other ways to teach good management for kids? One of the things I love to do is have them understand the connection between work and money. So a lot of times when we give our kids everything, we kill their entrepreneurial spirit and we kill that connection that they're going to make. So we don't give our kids allowances. We let them earn money for doing chores. Some chores they do that are just part of the family and some chores are for money. And doggone it, my kids do a lot of the work around the house. I mean, they do the dishes and the laundry That's and the That's the best sweeping. way to do it, huh? I know. <laughs> they make the mess. They should clean it up. Absolutely. <laughs> so you just have your feet up. <laughs> well, not quite. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what about when families are struggling themselves? You know, uh, my parents moved to this country, hardly had anything. They're working, you know, their butts off. How do they teach me good money skills um, when they're struggling themselves? That's a great question. I, I like to think of it as a family. You know, as a family, we are doing something or going through something. And as a family, we prosper. And as a family, you go through tough times. And I remember my parents sitting me down and saying, these are tough times, and you're not going to be, you know, buying lunch at school or whatever it was that was going to be the money-saving thing. But it was a connection to what was going on in the family. There was no scariness. It wasn't like, you know, you might not have somewhere to live. I mean, you have to be careful not to scare them. Yes. But it was for, the, for an eventual goal. And I love that of, you know, letting them know that, you know, we're struggling right now. So you can't have everything you want because I think so many times uh, today, struggling families still want to give everything yeah. to their kids. So, you know, they might have nothing, but they're buying new toys and, and things for their kids. And, and it just sends the wrong message. Yeah, and then those kids don't learn how to struggle. They don't know what struggle is until they're deep in it. And then they have no skills. They don't know how to handle it. So you're really giving a gift, letting them learn it when they're young and when they're protected and you can still take care of them. Then they know how to take care of themselves when they're older. I love that you said that, that it's okay okay to struggle. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a learning experience. And I think we're denying a lot of kids that experience. Absolutely. Well, what about encouraging, uh, you talked about entrepreneurship. How young should you encourage this? Oh, I'm all about as soon as they show even the slightest inkling. If they want to drag that lawnmower around the neighborhood, drag that thing around and, and see what you can work up. Because when they make that connection between money and their efforts, I mean, they have a skill that's going to last them their whole life. And goodness knows where they're going to be. I mean, we have fantastic entrepreneurs in our country. Our country really encourages that. And I would hate to think that, you know, our next great entrepreneurial mind is going to be stifled because he got his iPad every time he wanted one. There you go. And uh, bring that lawnmower over to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We have more coming back on Everywhere Woman.